Hello, and welcome to another edition of CUDAcasts. In episode 2, I showed you how to write a simple program using the CUDA C programming language. In this episode, I will show you an alternate method of accelerating code on a GPU using the open ACC directive-based programming. Compiler directives are pragma-based hints to the compiler about how to parallelize existing loops in your code. This means that with OpenACC, you annotate your existing code rather than writing custom parallel functions as you would do with CUDA. Because you are not writing GPU or accelerator specific code, this method provides portability across processors, including CPUs and accelerators or GPUs. With just a few directives and without modifying the underlying source, you can quickly move execution to the accelerator and achieve impressive application speedups. If you have ever used OpenMP directives, accelerating code with OpenACC should be very familiar. For the demonstration today, I'll be using the OpenACC C compiler from the Portland group. There are also OpenACC compilers available from CAPS and Cray. The code we'll be accelerating is the Jacobi iteration. We start with the current 2D grid of some initial values, and we want to calculate the next grid of values. The cells on the outside of the grid compromise our halo region and will not be updated. The grid values for the next generation are calculated by computing each cell's new value as the average of the four cells surrounding it. We do this for every cell in the grid with the exception of the halo region. This new 2D grid of values then becomes the current grid and we repeat this process until we either converge to a stable value or we hit the maximum number of iterations. Before adding any directives for acceleration, Let's compile and run this code and see how fast it performs as a single threaded application on the CPU. So the single threaded application took 78 seconds. Now from visual inspection, it's obvious the two sections taking the most time are the two sets of nested for loops. Here's one, and here's the other. So these are the sections that we're going to want to target with OpenACC directives and attempt to accelerate on the GPU. In C, a directive of any kind, whether OpenMP, OpenACC, or from somewhere else, is indicated with a pound or hash and the word pragma. We indicate it's an OpenACC directive by adding ACC after the pragma. At this point, if we have a compiler which is not OpenACC aware, it will simply ignore this directive and move on. This is another reason directive-based programming is so powerful. You can still compile and run your code even with a compiler that does not understand the directives. We are now going to specify which directive we want to use, and in this case I'm going to use the kernels directive. This tells the compiler that we want to turn the following code block, which here encapsulates the two nested for loops, into an accelerated function or kernel that will execute on the GPU. The kernels directive also gives the compiler a lot of freedom in determining the best way to accelerate the code. There's a related directive called parallel, which gives the programmer more control over how the compiler should accelerate the code. I will also add the same line of code to the other set of nested loops. Now let's save and compile, but this time we're going to add the dash ACC to the command line. This indicates to the compiler to look for and handle the OpenACC directives we just added. I'm also going to have it print out some useful compile time information using the dash mInfo equals Excel flag. Now the resulting output contains some very useful information. You can see here confirmation that the compiler was able to generate a parallel kernel for both sections we told it to accelerate on the GPU. See for lines 56 through 58, and the same for lines 67 and 69. Now let's run this code. Even with my powerful K20X GPU, we are running slower now than we were with the single-threaded CPU version earlier, 183 seconds versus 78. So what's happening? The problem here is data movement. As with all modern computing, most of the energy and time required to execute code is consumed in moving data. 
So we need to ensure we are transferring the minimum needed data and then only when it is required. So before we fix this problem, let's take a quick detour to discuss the different memory spaces we are working with. We have the CPU with its own memory space and the GPU with its own separate memory space. Connecting these two processors and memory spaces is the PCI Express Bus, or PCIe for short. This connection allows data to be transferred from the CPU to the GPU and back again. In fact, the PCIe bus is duplex, so data can be traveling both directions at the same time. Now back to our code. The OpenACC compiler can only work with the information in which we've provided. It knows we need both the A and A new array on the GPU for each of our two sections, but we didn't tell it anything about what happens to the data outside of those sections. Without this knowledge, it has to copy the full arrays to the GPU and back to the host for each accelerated section every time we go through the, the while loop. That's a lot of wasted data transfer. To help deal with this, we will use the OpenACC data directive. Now for this algorithm, the Jacobi iteration, we just need to transfer the array A to the GPU at the beginning of the while loop, and then we only need to copy array A back to the host at the end of the loop. And in addition, we just need to create the A new array on the GPU, and we do not need to transfer data between the GPU and host at all. And so we indicate all this to the OpenACC compiler using this pragma. The copy clause says to copy the array A to the accelerator at the beginning of the code block following the data directive and to copy it back to the host at the end. The create clause says to allocate A new on the accelerator, but not to transfer it between the host and the accelerator. So we'll save that. And once again, we'll recompile. And you'll notice our data directive has changed the compiler output and now indicates that we have optimized our data transfer to the minimum needed. Let's go ahead and run this. And there's the acceleration we're looking for. And we only needed to add it three lines of OpenACC code to get it. So we've gone from 78 seconds from a single threaded CPU version to six seconds in the accelerated GPU version. For more information and examples on OpenACC, you can visit the openacc.org site. Thanks for watching this edition of CUDACasts.